Hey, what is up? Welcome back Design Squad. And in this video, we're gonna continue on repeaters. As you can see on my screen, I have this repeater list of different bits. And you know, most of this I covered in previous videos. For example, if you wanna add a new element to the table of a repeater in Action, you can do that. If you wanna filter out different options, you can do that as well. If you wanna know how to take the information from the repeater data set and add it to another table like this, for example, where I can allocate, let's say, an employee for the day and just take the data somewhere else in their prototype, you can also find the video. So all of it is covered. But what I want to cover today is a build up on top and adding additional feature, which is requested by one of the viewers, Avishai, and asked, hey, how could I add, let's say, a search functionality to a prototype? So when I type, let's say, a name or something like that, only that value would be filtered out and it would appear on top of the list. And it's super easy to do that in Axure as long as you're aware of how Repeater works. If you don't, go back and watch other videos. But for those who know how it's done, let me just introduce what I have on my uh, scene. This data set, which is, shouldn't be anything new, and I called it employee list, and I have a lot of different employees. I have several different columns. So what I'm gonna do next is really just add an input field right off the bat. So I'm just gonna go and find something like a text field, and I'm gonna format it really quickly. And so I did add a very simple search field, but if I type in it, nothing really is gonna happen. And so what I want to for it to do is once I start typing, meaning when the text changes in the input field, I want it to target all the values in the repeater and then just showcase the right one, which matches that those values. I'm just gonna add a new interaction and I'm gonna add it, of course, on text changed. We can do anything afterwards. But before that, we need to definitely enable cases because there's gonna be two cases. One is gonna be to add a filter and another case is gonna be to remove a filter. So I'm just gonna enable case and add some logic to it. And by logic, what I mean is we need to just check that what's inside the input field is actually alphanumeric, meaning that there is a value, it's not just an empty field. And so I'm gonna say if text on a widget with this, or you could actually select the search bar if you want to be more specific, equals text, or you could just say is, alphanumeric meaning numbers or letters just that so meaning if there is anything inside we can we can do something about it and then we can also copy that same case and do just an empty case and i'm just gonna make it case two just to distinguish for myself and i'm just gonna remove the statement we don't need it so if it's if it's basically empty which is totally opposite of that, we can action something. So that's super duper easy. And so what we're gonna do next is really, we need a global variable to store that information because it's gonna be much easier for us to compare and rewrite it and to have just that kind of like a virtual container to know what's in a filter, right? It's kind of like what we did before in the sorting options and filter options. You can go explore. There's a lot of different video material on that. But what I'm gonna do is just go to my project global variables up above. You cannot see it on my screen, but if you go in the top corner, there should be project tab, click on that global variables and just gonna add a variable, which is gonna be, let's say, search value or something like that. Name it whatever you wish, whatever is most appropriate for you. And it's gonna be by default empty and that's cool. And so once we basically make a text change to that input field, what we're gonna do is just allocate that variable. So set variable value, and then we're gonna pick the, our variable, set it to text on widget, which is that widget, which is what we're typing right now. And we just need to select that. So it's search input field. But now, even if I would type it, it would just log it into global variable, but it really wouldn't do anything else. So what we need to do is set filter. And how to do that, you just add action. And if you go down into the repeater actions down below, you're gonna find this add filter option. Click on that, it's as easy as, as that. And as you can see, you have two repeaters. One is really that allocated today, it's just a mismatch, it should actually say allocate list and employee list is really what we're targeting and what we're filtering. So just be sure if you have a couple of repeaters that you're targeting the right one. I know that I'm targeting employee list on the left and so I'm gonna select it. And this is where the interesting bit comes in and a bit more challenging bit for a beginners. I would just add a filter which we can call anything we want but let's call it search. We need to remember the name because we're gonna need to remove that filter later on. You could be specific and just add, let's say if item state equals as in an example, but that's not gonna change it. What I'm gonna also remove is remove other filters so it doesn't clash with other filters we have. To action it, we definitely need to go to functions. And functions, if you know, 
if you remember my videos, is is really awesome place where you can go and make it in depth and make it properly, you know, well tied in together. And so I'm going to add the local variable because I need to assign our global variable value to the local variable value and then use that local variable to play with and add it to the rule. So what I'm going to do is literally I'm going to add a local variable and I'm going to set LVAR, which is our local variable to value of variable and I'm just going to select search value, let's say, and that's it. And then in the function, I can then start using this local variable. If you know the syntax, you can just type it yourself, or you can just go into insert variable or function, and we're looking for repeater function. So I'm just going to scroll down, and this is what I'm looking for. For example, at this case, we're going to search it by name to begin with, because that's going to be a minimal viable approach for us to see if it works. And so I'm going to select C name, which is basically this column on the left hand side with a name in it. And I'm going to just be like equals double equal is from programming languages. And I'm going to be like LVAR one. So we're going to compare in the repeater items with that local variable value of a global variable value. I mean, you could also bypass the local variable if you want to, you could maybe add the global variable here, like search value, for example, it could be as simple as that. But I like to separate it in case you want to add additional layer of complexity later on. And in case you want to check different parameters. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to click OK. And that would set our rules. Now, if we go and test it out, you're going to see something really, really cool. So as you can see, it's my list. I just need to know what I'm searching for because again, it's a prototype. So if I say Peter Johnson, I think it was yes. And then if it's the Alec, which is basically a simplification of my name, there is that too. And that's great. But now as you can see, if I delete the text field, nothing really happens, it doesn't reset the filter. So what we're going to do, is really in that second statement we had, we're going to add this remove filter action, and we're going to select employee list. And we need to, if you remember what they named was a filter called search. So I just need to say search, click OK, and that should remove it. And if we test it out, you're going to see that that should work pretty damn well. So as let's say, what's the simple name in our list? Let's say Taj Rama, simple as that Taj Rama, boom. And if I remove, it resets. So now you have yourself a simple search functionality. What I would challenge you to do next is think of how you can search not just the name, but also the title and the team and staff ID. And just to give you a hint, you don't need to recreate different search fields. But what you definitely need to do is play with the cases because you're going to have to have multiple cases where you check different values and then allow it to add those filters so they don't crash. But it's definitely possible. And I hope you learn how to do a search functionality for your tables or your data sets in Actuar using repeaters. As per usual, if you like this video, give a like, subscribe to this channel. And on that note, until next time.